Eric, a lot of the residents in this area say they have been in their homes for more than 10 years, but in just a matter of a few hours, all of their belongings were ruined. Now they say that the water that was once this high may be gone now, but it left behind a physical mess to clean up as well as an emotional one. We've been here since lunchtime and a lot of people have been coming up to the doors, but they are all met with this sign that says the restaurant is closed until further notice. Now I spoke to a woman who lives on the second floor of this unit. She showed me cell phone video from this very spot of Monday's storm. What it looked like in this area when she walked out onto her balcony. We're inside that food truck right now for that big reveal that students have been waiting for. They worked on everything from the designs on the outside of the truck to the food that will be served from the inside. This is still a very active scene, so I'm going to actually step out of the way and show you. Crews have actually pulled the plane from the hillside, and we actually just saw them bring the engine down as well. You see it. It is dry. It is brown. It is brittle out here, and all it takes is a small spark to ignite something like this into something much bigger. A lot goes into planning an event this size. The city is expecting 300,000 people and you can see just the work that has been put in. The tree is up and the projectors are going and we're just waiting to see some lights go on. And once you head through the sliding glass doors, the fun begins. We're taking Southwest, the airport's biggest airline. Just the this is what the Mountain View neighborhood looks like one month after floodwaters swept through these homes. On the sidewalks, there are still dirt, debris and personal belongings. Residents say these are still their houses, but they no longer feel like home. It still hurts. It's, it's sorry. It still hurts. Holding her granddaughter close, Mary Landavazo gazes at the house she's called home for the last 12 years. It's like you, you do so much and like I, I love decoration. I, I did so much in, inside. We did so much outside remodeling and all for it to be gone in a blink of an eye. For her, January 22nd feels like it happened yesterday. We're still living it. We're still going through it. We're still having to go through things every day. She says she'll never forget having to escape her Mountain View home from a tiny window on the second floor. That little window on the left side all the way at the top. That's where we came out of. My husband climbed out um, so he can help me. Came out, came down this way, stopped right here. I had to step, step on this with my foot this way and then step on the pillared, from the pillared to a kayak. In the blink of an eye, the water that forced her from her home disappeared. Like that. It, it happened fast. But what didn't disappear was the destruction it left behind. This used to be the living area. This used to be the dining area. This over here um, was the laundry room. And this was like the pantry area. This used to be a brick wall. It's gone. The water, the current just knocked it down and the emotional scars. Where you're driving and it's raining and, and you're freaking out because you pass by a puddle and, and there's a trauma there. You think you're okay. You know, you think you're okay, but, but then it hits you. And when asked if her house will ever be a home again. Is it gonna be the same? We, we don't know. There is no relief. There is no relief. There's no relief. In Mountain View. Shelly Leggett, NBC7. As many were getting ready to sit down for those Thanksgiving feasts, it was interrupted. A large vegetation fire forced people to evacuate. Being stuck in traffic while trying to get to your holiday destination is not completely out of the norm, but this traffic jam is not because of the holiday rush. Cal Fire spent their Thanksgiving containing a fast-moving brush fire in Hamul. It was first reported around 2 Thursday afternoon in the area of Highway 94 and Vista Sage Road. The first thing that was going through my mind was a lot of my neighbors uh, that live along the hill right there where the fire started, and I know a bunch of them are on vacations and everything and so 
My first thought was, crap, what's going to happen with their homes? Cal Fire called it the Sage Fire and says because of its critical rate of spread and immediate structure threat, mandatory evacuations were issued. Probably evacuated close to 100 folks. Many people had to pack up what they could and hit the road, leaving their turkey and all the trimmings behind. But they say the recent rain in the area was a blessing. The weed is still moist right now. So, so it, it rained about a couple days ago. So that, that helps. A temporary evacuation point was set up at Steel Canyon High School. The fire crews moved fast, working to contain the sage fire from the ground and the air, and eventually stopped the spread. Highway 94 between Vista Sage and Rancho Miguel were closed for several hours while crews mopped up. The fire has grown to an estimated 39 acres, and the cause is unknown. In Hamul, Shelley Leggett, NBC7. Staff at the Croc Center say they are all about teamwork, and that teamwork was on full display Monday when two employees did not hesitate to take action. They say they saw a man standing on the roof of his car right near the center as floodwaters were rising. Got to work, showed up. Uh, it wasn't raining too hard yet. But around 530 is when it started to rain and it was nonstop. Jay Lancaster has been with the Croc Center for about a year, but has lived in San Diego for 30. Sammy Cerny has been in San Diego since 2009, but lifeguarding has been a part of her life for even longer. I've always expected to have to jump into the competition pool and maybe get someone there. On Monday, the Croc Center's teamwork was on full display when an emergency arose. I had a session upstairs in the gym. By the time I came down, um, I heard over the radio that somebody needed help. Jay says it started as someone's car was stalled in the water, but not even three minutes later, the situation turned into a full-on water rescue. When I heard over the walkie someone might need help, I'm getting out of their car. Jay responded. This is video from the Salvation Army showing water over the windows of a white truck and its driver standing on the roof. Jay says he immediately jumped into action. I ran back over to grab some shorts. Uh, I said, I'm going to just go out there and I'm going to grab them. I wanted to see what he needed that for. Like, that's lifeguard gear. Other team members joined in bringing rope and flotation devices. If it could happen anywhere, happening outside the crock, any type of event like that's the best place it can happen. Jay anchored the rope as Sammy made her way through the floodwaters to the stranded driver. There were sticks and trash and different things that were going by in that area. In fact, uh, in the first part of, well, the first part of our rescue, which is not seen in the video, there was a trash can that came floating by us, and it actually hit Jay in the head, which he does not mention. She secured him, and they made their way back. When Sammy got to this man, he was a little bit frantic. So I just tried to crack a couple jokes, and I think it helped. By the time he got back, uh, completely different mood. And once they were back on dry land, everyone started to breathe a little easier. So it doesn't matter if somebody's out on the street. It doesn't matter if somebody's in here. As for being called a hero. I'm, I'm going to refer back to our motto. We just do the most good. Sammy says she'll leave that to the professionals. I have my brother who's a firefighter. And to me, I'm like, wow, that's amazing. But having it be on me, like, I just wanted to go and get this guy out of some water. At the Croc Center, Shelly Leggett, NBC7. Students in this room at Mira Mesa High School will learn to play a number of instruments. They have percussion, woodwind, brass, but they say it's much more than just part of the curriculum. It's a lifestyle. When the bell rings at Mira Mesa High School, senior Andy Wong says he heads to the band room. The first place I enter is this room and the last place I come to before I leave is this room. A place he's called his home away from home for the last four years. This building has just sort of become a place that I hold super close to my heart. Nevermore. Students from all walks of life, different backgrounds, speaking 14 different languages, make up the award-winning Mira Mesa High School Sapphire Sound. You don a uniform, you have a great sense of pride, you hold an instrument, and it transforms your life. Jean Christensen has been teaching music for 33 years. 30 of those years have been right here at Mira Mesa High School. We are prideful. We, equity allows us 
to be equal to any school in across the nation, no matter how much funding they have. So when asked where her students would be without music. Gosh, I'm so sorry. Can we? I'm <laughs> like. That thought process is terrible. It was an answer she couldn't bear. She says music is a universal language. Every celebration in this world and every mournful moment has music. To keep Christensen, her students, and many others just like them in San Diego and around the country from facing the music, the National Association of Music Merchants, or NAM, is headed to Capitol Hill to fight for more funding. Every time there's a budget, we have to make sure that that budget is fully funded. This is the first time since 2019 that a group of music industry leaders will travel to Washington, D.C. and advocate for music and arts programs in American schools. They're asking Congress to fund Title IV Part A to its fully authorized amount of $1.65 billion. That money gets granted to various states. Our state delegates then make sure we educate the districts and states on how to apply for that funding. Christensen says she'd normally be there advocating on Capitol Hill, but says it's band season and the show must go on. You dig in and realize you've got friends just like you. You can become one and you can work well with one another through music. Shelley Leggett, NBC7.